Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief keeps you informed about what's happening in Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, and Maryland. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and, of course, local weather. Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief presented by Annapolis Subaru and the SPCA of Anne Arundel County. Some days it's a slow news day, today and yesterday, not so much. So let's get right into it, shall we? Boy, there was a lot of action in Annapolis yesterday morning very early. Multiple Annapolis neighborhoods were raided Wednesday morning as part of a statewide investigation into drug and gun trafficking. FBI and law enforcement agencies executed 20 search and seizure warrants and arrested 14 suspects across Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, and Baltimore City. The raid, described as loud and expansive, saw large SWAT team convoys and numerous flashbangs throughout the area. Details on which neighborhoods were targeted and the number of arrests per location remain unclear. The FBI and Annapolis police have declined to comment other than to confirm that the raids did indeed happen. In much better police news, an Anne Arundel County police officer rescued a deer that had become stuck in a soccer net at Peninsula Park on Sunday morning. Corporal Sears responded to the call and freed the big buck using shears to cut the netting. The deer was not injured and was released back into the wild. The rescue, captured on the officer's body cam, was praised by the Anne Arundel County Police Department for demonstrating professionalism in handling wildlife. Donna at Annapolis Creative reported on this story. And to see the video, and you really should just to see some cop compassion, head on over to AnnapolisCreative.com or over to Annapolis Creative on Facebook. Well, the Woodland Beach Volunteer Fire Department is no more, sort of. They've rebranded as the Edgewater Volunteer Fire Department and launched a capital campaign to build a new fire station. Set for construction in early 2025, the facility will improve response times with expanded equipment, storage, advanced safety features, and a community space. The campaign does encourage the community to support through donations, volunteering to help maintain Edgewater safety, and you can get more info at ignitethefuture.info. Again, that's ignitethefuture.info. Annapolis Subaru has partnered with the Walter S. Mills Parole Elementary School for years to help the students thrive. This year, they wanted to increase access to music education. And through the Annapolis Subaru Loves Learning Initiative, they donated new instruments, including 30 violins, four violas, along with clarinets and trombones helping to expand the school's band and strings programs. The Subaru team will be attending the students' December concert to see their donation in action, and I think I'm going to go down there and check it out as well. Maryland Hall continues to be Annapolis's cultural hub, offering performances and exhibits in dance, music, theater, and visual arts. The venue is home to various local arts organizations and now is offering memberships at various levels with perks like early access to events, discounts, exclusive receptions, and more. If you're not a member, I gotta ask, why not? Get more info on the new membership levels at marylandhall.org. Finally, Homestead Gardens Annual Fall Fest has returned and runs weekends through October 27th. Families can enjoy activities like corn mazes, hay rides, and pumpkin picking, all for $15 a person with free entry for kids under two, seniors, and dogs. Fall treats, barnyard animals, and photo ops make it a real festive autumn celebration for the whole family. Maybe you get some good Christmas card pictures, but advanced tickets are encouraged, and you can do that at homesteadgardens.com. All right, podcast stuff. Up this weekend on the Local Business Spotlight, we chat with Kitchen Tune-Up, a great affordable way to get a brand new kitchen for a fraction of the cost. And in closing, one of the best ways to keep up on the local news is the Daily News Recap email. It goes out at 7 p.m., 366 days this year because it's a leap year. It's free, free, and it's paywall free. And here is a link right here in the show notes for you to sign up. And please feel free to let your friends, family, and colleagues all know about it as well. And that is a wrap. As always, thank you for being you and a thank you to the sponsors for the Daily News Brief. Annapolis Subaru, the SBCA of Anne Arundel County, Solar Energy Services, Hospice of the Chesapeake, and Fish for a Cure.
All right, so now you just need to sit back because we have weather from DCMDVA Weather. And because it's Thursday, Trevor's here with Annapolis Makerspace and your Annapolis Makerspace Maker Minutes. All of that's coming right up for you, so hang tight. Fish for a day, party for a night, all for a great cause. Don't miss Fish for a Cure's 18th Annual Fishing Tournament and Shore Party, Saturday, November 9th at Safe Harbor, Annapolis. Register to fish and raise funds for the Cancer Survivorship Program at Luminous Health Anne Arundel Medical Center's Gayton and Joanne D. Cesaris Cancer Institute. All funds raised directly benefit cancer patients and their families. Register your boat or get your Shore Party ticket for fishforacure.org. Again, that's fishforacure.org. When you live near Annapolis, you know how fickle the weather can be. So you need a truly local forecast that's accurate and reliable. Forecast right here in Annapolis. DCMDVA weather is not just for today, but for the rest of the week and the weekend too. Now here's George Young of DCMDVA weather with the weather outlook for today and beyond. Hey everyone, this is George with DCMDVA Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, October 3rd. A mix of sun and clouds today with sunshine, then returning in full effect Friday through the weekend with nice conditions remaining in place for the area much of next week. Look for AM clouds today to give way to some PM sunshine with highs in the mid to upper 70s with sunny skies then on tap for Friday with highs climbing up into the upper 70s to lower 80s for afternoon highs. From there, the weekend will bring ideal conditions with max sunshine and highs near 80 degrees Saturday and in the mid to upper 70s for most in the area on Sunday with more sun than expected next week with temps around 70 degrees for highs Monday and Tuesday. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Ong of DCMDVA Weather. Make it a great day out there today. Stay healthy and be safe. And be sure to follow DCMDVA Weather on Facebook and X for updates each day, along with the website at dcmdvaweather.info, so you can always stay weather-informed. Coping with advanced illness can be overwhelming, and determining the best options for a loved one isn't always so easy. But here at Hospice of the Chesapeake, your hometown hospice, we want you to know you do have a choice. You can choose exactly who provides the care and the type of care you receive. And it's your decision when and where your loved one receives that care. We have served our community, family, and friends for over 40 years. We are there when you need us. Learn how we can help at hospicechesapeake.org. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Maker Minutes. Brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Running October 18th through November 17th, be sure to check out the Maryland STEM Festival with tons of events all over Maryland at all kinds of different locations, schools, libraries, makerspaces, and more. And really, even though it says October 18th, there are events starting as early as today. So check out their calendar at MarylandSTEMFestival.org. On Saturday, check out our friends up at Chesapeake Arts Center who are having their 10th Annual Arts in the Park Festival up in Brooklyn Park. At Chesapeake Lightcraft in Annapolis, next week they continue their teardrop camper class, so it's probably too late to get in on that. But registration is open for their classes coming up in October and November, including ones making tenderly dinghies and Chester Yalls. On Sunday, be sure to check out the First Sunday Arts Festival down on the first block of West Street and around the corner on Calvert. With lots of local vendors, music, and great food. And knits and pieces off of Bestgate Road. Today, they have their final Socks 101 class. Sunday, they have their Knitting Socks 2 at a Time class, as well as a comprehensive Learn and Knit class. On Monday, there's Knitting on Tiny Needles, and registration is open for a basic sweater knitting class, comprehensive Learn to Crochet, Beginning Interlac, Granny Square Christmas Stockings, Toft Animal Crocheting, and Advanced Knitting Techniques with Texture Diversity. At Local by Design, Saturday, they have a Paint Your Own Piece of Furniture class, and Wednesday, there's a Pumpkin Fused Glass Nightlight and Votive Workshop with River Rock Glass Studio. At Art Farm in Annapolis, Saturday, they have their first exposure photography class. Also on Saturday, they have Spark, a creative workshop for small business owners. And there's also a second session on Tuesday for Spark. So that's two different sessions, one on Saturdays and one on Tuesdays. Sunday, check out their Shibori Dye Workshop, as well as their Witch's Garden Workshop. Monday, there's Introduction to Mindful Mending and Basic Embroidery Stitches. On Tuesday, there's Watercolor Workshop for all levels. Then on Friday, there's a Plain Air Painting Workshop, as well as a Teen Block Printing Patch Night. And registration is open for more adult workshops, including sketch nights, wet felting, marbling, collage art, block printing, as well as the art of arting and more. And for their kids' art camps, 
Starting today, there's mixed media explorations for ages 11 through 15. Also today, there's nature art school for ages 6 through 8. On Saturday, there's a kids art school for ages 7 through 9. Monday, there's a kids art school for ages 4 through 5, as well as another session for ages 6 through 8. On Tuesday, there's pencil, charcoal, ink, and watercolor for ages 9 through 11, as well as fashion design, sketching, and conceptualizing for ages 9 through 12. On Wednesday, there's a mixed media art school for ages 9 through 11, as well as podcasting for ages 10 through 14. And also check out their Creative Circle monthly meetup, where you can work on your own project in whatever medium you enjoy with like-minded creative people, or use materials that are prompt from the instructor. The next one is coming up tonight at the Anne Arundel County Public Library System this week. Today, Eastport Annapolis Neck has a Crafternoon. Odenton has a Scary Safe Crafternoon. Brooklyn Park has Steam and Snacks. And Glen Burnie has a Thursday Night Art Club. Tomorrow, Glen Burnie has a Lego Club. Saturday, Crofton has Ask a Master Gardener. And Severna Park has Return of the Zombie Dolls, making zombie versions of dolls. On Monday, Eastport Annapolis Neck has Steam Mondays. And then on Tuesday, Severna Park has Stitching in the Stacks, with both an afternoon and an evening edition. Odenton has a hackathon where you can learn cybersecurity skills. Discoveries has a Lego build and create challenge. And Severn has an open craft night. If you have any questions about the Annapolis Makerspace, the Maker Minutes, or any of these events, feel free to contact me at trevor at makeannapolis.org. And you can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website, also at makeannapolis.org. Where they're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. Is all this talk of inflation making you uneasy? Me too especially the uncertainty. How bad will it eat into my future purchasing power? Well, don't feel helpless because solar energy can give you some financial control. By installing and owning your solar system, you can lock out electricity cost inflation by locking in your electricity price for more than 25 years. Many of our inflation-fighting clean energy systems offset 100% of the annual electricity demands. Customers frequently add electric vehicle charging and backup batteries to their solar projects, providing them inexpensive auto fuel and additional energy security for the home. Freeze energy inflation in its tracks by committing to affordable, clean solar energy. Call us today at 410-923-6090 or visit us at solarsaves.net. But don't wait another minute. Sunshine's a waste. Sunshine, sunshine. Nothing else can make me feel so fine. You've been listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues, this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. And don't forget about our website, IamAnnapolis.net, where you can find even more information. And make sure you follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at IamAnnapolis. This Daily News Brief podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m.